Hey guys, so welcome back to the channel. I have another interesting video. Uh, this time again working on a 1991 Toyota MR2 shifter release module. It's really a very fancy relay, which it does have some more uh, circuitry than just a normal relay. Uh, this is for a steep wetlock right here in Virginia. Again, 1991 MR2, 2.2 liters. Uh, this goes across the Camrys, uh, Lexus from that year up to like, I think 2007 or 8. It uses kind of like a version of this one. So if you have any of those, of these modules, uh, there are different uh, configurations, but they work the same. Please, if you don't have any problems, remove it from the car and send it to me because they're pretty much obsolete. It's very hard to find parts or even to find a module. They're no longer for sale. Uh, it, you know, most of the problems that you have in here is the capacitors and diodes. When a capacitor leaks, it, it, it damages the actual uh, board. Let me just show you pictures of how he looked. Actually, I, after I remove the capacitors, Man, hence that a little bit, like Erico says, and hence, and hence, and hence. <laughs> but yeah, so you can see, I mean, destroy uh, board uh, is sometimes impossible to repair complete. It was not the case for Steve, but I did perform a first repair, and I thought it was ready. We put him in the car. He leaves local, so we put him in the car, and it was not working. I'm like, okay, let me just. I has to. My, I must have missed something. Um, it can be that when I connected on the car, I needed just that little extra power to open up more. You know what I mean? But yeah, so right now I'm doing a very complete stress test. So we can all see and, he's some, and he will see as well that now his module is now working 100%. All right, so this is just a little um, show how it looks. This is how it looks in the car. This is what you will see. So that is the shifter. And this is the shifter module. And this one you will have A5933-17017. I think it's the part number for his, which I have plastics in here. 170010. Hard to see in the picture, but yeah, this is what well, you see. You will have, there is um, newer, um, or updated parts 020 and 030 and there neither of those are available so yeah i repair his and i want to do the test for this i want to show you also the wire diagram which i have open right here so this is very good identifix has all their manuals and original information so i did uh, perform that this is because that connector let me just show you in a second uh, so this connector S7, the, the manual refers in here, is the actual connector in the vehicle, not the connector on the component. So the numbers will be kind of like backwards because you are plugging in that module, right? So what I did is I did so for easy for me to know how it looks because it's just like this, one, two, three, four. And you can check even on the vehicle because pin number one is ground. So ground to ground and it will work because I'm going to show you in a second inside, because this is this is a nice um, um, diagram because it shows some, some of the internals. And you can see that is, this is not just a relay. It has, you know, um, comp uh, compatibles, uh, uh, amplifier, um, operational amplifiers. So Toyota is always ahead of time in his electronics and some of the German vehicles as well. And then we have a pulse width modulated component in here that also opens and closes capacitors and some other things in here that might be a little over the top of some people, but some of the electronical, uh, electrical electricians and engineers will understand what I'm talking about. But yeah, so to see what we have here, I also made a lease of the easy. So we got pin one ground, pin two is positive for the key solenoid, which I'm gonna show you in a second on the, on the actually diagram. Uh, three is power coming from accessory, four is a power, and then five is power to stop, a stop from a stop brake uh, switch. So we have, again, because the position in here is a little different, but we see that we have a, a, a constant power coming or through a fuse through the brake switch and then onto pin five onto this module. 
constant power again like i said on number four and then accessory power well, that's what it says in here radiator and cigarette let me just zoom a little bit so you can see that better again here 15 amp fuse radio or right yeah radio and cigarette so that's an accessory uh, power and then this one is a constant ground on pin one and then we have the key interlock solenoid again the key meaning the exactly key to release the key when you put the uh, solenoid in park it will de-energize it and then the solenoid will collapse and you can get the key into the lock position and then you can get the key out so there is a lot more information in here that i want to share too and this is very important because i mean this is when manufacturers used to share more for the technicians and what they do now uh, in some cases because in some cases they still do but this is very very good information so shift lock uh, shift lock mechanism again i'm going to go back to the diagram shift lock mechanism this is a solenoid so this little module is going to energize the solenoid and i have it here using a test line substituted value this module pro, uh, provides power and ground into those two to, into these two wires for that solenoid and also has another solenoid and pin two again pin two here that is for the key interlock I have another test light in there, which I'm providing ground myself, and then the module provides the power when is the time to, based on the position of the switch, again, the gear selector switch. So what I'm doing in here, this is the gear selector switch connector, and all I'm doing is having the common wire on the center, which is a green wire, and then we're gonna have a green with a red. I forgot to put those in here, so give me just one second. All right, put this now, the pins in here, so you can all have that. It's very easy. This is kind of like a to decipher a little bit of what is in there, and then we can all use it for testing because that's what I'm trying to share here to all of you. Let me just unplug and disconnect all my equipment was it still on. So we have the shift selector switch here, and then the shift lock solenoid with these wires. The negative part will be the light blue, and the positive side will be light blue red. I had to stop. My doggies are barking and barking, but yeah, well, that's their life, so it's okay. So uh, going back again, uh, let me just say that shift solenoid negative is light blue, and shift, left, uh, shift lock solenoid positive is light blue red. Uh, we can see that in here as well. So inside here, let me make sure this focus, come on. Uh, let me just get something to point because it looks like the camera is having a little bit of a trouble when it's that close uh, come on what is my plastic picks right here i got one all right so we can see uh hopefully right here you got a green with a white this one right here is a green with a red and then a green so these three wires are also here it's probably easier to see right there if this is in focus right there and then you can see a light blue and then a light blue with a red all right so that is what we have again pin one ground pin two is the key lock solenoid and we have that the slide going in there and then we got pin three power from the accessory pin four power and pin five is power when the brake pedal is applied at I'm just going to have a different switch so I can just do again powers in here so I, the reason I have a yellow in here because this one has three switches for powers so with this box that I have this universal test platform I can apply power on the red with the switch one I can apply power on the yellow wires on the switch two and I can apply power on the green sorry on the orange wires with the switch three which I'm not using on this time okay so everything is ready to go so i'm going to become the shift solenoid or sorry the shift switch by engaging these two and perfect the shift lock solenoid is now being powered up so powers and ground supplied by this module is good fantastic because this was not working now the next test again the common is the green is the other side which is the key interlock release 
and now we have power. Let me just go back a little bit so you can see when I remove that from there, that will go off. When I go over to the other side, the only one goes on. And it's just the way this is supposed to work. How I know that, again, Toyota has put all that information available for us technicians. So we have the with ignition switch in the on position. When a signal that the brake pedal is depressed, stop light switch on. And a signal that the shift lever is input in the P range, park continuing between P1 and P, right? P1, red, P, green. That's as I put in here. Uh, of the chip position switch, it says P range is simple to the ECU. Again, the ECU that they're referring is, is this ECU, right? The ECU operates and current flows from terminal four power, right? Out of, of the ECU and terminal SL plus. SL plus is right here. Uh, it's the plus of the shift lock solenoid. Terminal SL negative to terminal one of the ECU ground. So now this is also connected, the negative part to pin one, which is what? Pin one ground. So that's why when this switch is connected, P1 and P, that works because that closes the circuit and makes the solenoid engage. All right, the other part is key interlock mechanism with the switch in the on or accessory position when the shift lever is put in park range no continuity between p2 and p control switch the current flowing from terminal 2 of the ecu key interlock on is cut off so whenever the switch is in park this should not be on that's what it's saying right there so that's why when this is no continuity between, and this is very important, if we see there, uh, no continuity between P2 and P. Again, red, if I see here, green with a red is P1. Green with a wire, which I have here with a black wire is P2. So if we have continuity between P, which is a green wire, and P2, this should light up and it does. All right, so this is the same test you can perform in your car. You want to know if the switch and the shifter is working, you can just do exactly what I did. This is what I call substituted value, substituted test light. Um, um, how can I name it to uh, substituted load, right? So we are substituting the switch for, now what is a switch? It's a close, closing a contact. So very easy, right? It's very easy when you see someone else doing the test you now understand better how can you check this safely and understand if this is bad if the shifter solenoid is bad or if the key lock solenoid is bad you can remove the connector supply your own powers and apply this test light all i'm using here is just a small test light you can use any test light for 12 volts a solenoid will draw what between you know 0.8 to 1 amp so this is perfect. And then I'm supplying the ground. Why am I supplying the ground on the key lock? Because if we see the diagram, you see that this little computer is not providing the ground for that one. So this is external. So we have connector pin two to the key lock solenoid. And then the same ground that P1, pin, uh, pin one uses is shared on that. It's in the instrument cluster someplace else, but again, that is just a connector in here. This is the way uh, Toyota uses splices and connectors on those that are familiar with uh, Japanese diagrams. But so yeah, we got a junction connector in here. We got a splice in here, so this is this is good. So we know now that uh, this is not a ground provided by here. In the other case for the shift lock solenoid, we know that yes, both wires are provided by this ECU, and so is the switch is all connected to the same module. But right now we know, and Steve now knows that this is working a hundred percent. So Steve, good news. I got your module shifter working 100%. I will call you so you can pick it up tomorrow and 
you can have that beautiful car now working properly all right guys thank you so much for visiting the channel i hope that you see how much time i take extra to not just perform a repair because sometimes people say, oh yeah that's electronics i don't want to learn that but you know what this is not just electronics in here i'm also showing you how to test don't repair this and now you know if this is bad or the switch is bad the shift all in all is bad so very easy right so i'm trying to go slow if you have any questions you want me to change the way i'm showing uh micah you go you're going too fast in here we don't understand that can you record more on the screen please let me know uh what would you like to have different or if it's everything good the audio is good the video is good plus please give me your thumbs up share my content that would really help me a lot all right guys see you next time don't forget to subscribe bye bye